Yo, what's going on guys? Riot here and welcome to Goji Center. Today we're going to be watching an old video, an oldie but goldie. A video I meant to react to, but I put it off a week because I don't like to be rude. I like to wait before I react and then life got busy. Arc probably updated and I completely forgot about it. Subscribe to Goji Center, link down below in the description. If you guys haven't already, I'll come to your house and kick you in the nuts. Leave a like, subscribe, and let's do it. <laughs> Woo! Warning. This video contains graphic These are the best ones that may be unsuitable for some audiences. Oh my god, it's such an old video that they don't have their epic superhero comic book voice just yet. It's it's a sequel or a prequel? Viewer discretion is advised. Today we are going to cover the many ways Skull Island will brutally plummet you to the bottom of the food chain in the Woo! bloodiest and most gory ways. God damn! This video contains some pretty distasteful content. So what? if you happen to have a weak stomach, we recommend you don't eat any red pasta while you're watching <laughs> this video. If this is your first time watching our content, we would be thrilled if you could join us by hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell. Still here? Great. Now to the 10 horrible ways you could brutally die in Skull Island. These guys always destroy my ADD, ADHD, I don't even know anymore. They start talking about pasta and my mind just shoots off in a thousand directions. And so I gotta pause it for a second to refocus on the video. I'm thinking about pasta. I'm thinking about how he called it pasta also. And I think that's like a regional thing. Who, which, what is it pasta or is it pasta? Does it not matter? This, this is where my mind went. One death from above. Oh shit. Skull Island's array of wildlife evolved in such a way that even some of the smallest creatures posed a fatal threat. The leaf wings are the perfect example. Armed with a serrated bone trunk, this camouflaged animal could plummet from high altitudes into its unsuspecting victim. These things were so, so gangster, the this details. poor bastard right here. We have evidence that the leaf wings could in fact sever human limbs. This guy did not want to go on the island. He was like, no, bullshit, that I, I'm gonna die there. They're like, come on, don't be a pussy. And then, and then he went and then he gets horribly mangled. There's, there's several life lessons behind this guy. It is likely that these animals had an understanding of the anatomy of their prey. What? As they knew exactly exactly where to strike in order to disable them. They and did though. prevent them from running away or fighting back. <gasps> the serrated edges on their trunks could have caused increased trauma to flesh, thus leading to an abundant amount of blood loss and certain death. Two. That, I can't, I, I gotta move death. on. <laughs> you thought the leaf wings were horrible already. Meet the psycho vulture. A close biological relative to the leaf wing, but with evolutionary adaptations to not need camouflage and light receptors in their eyes. Its thermal vision allows it to exclusively locate potential prey. In this case, humans. If this wasn't freaky enough, these animals live up to their name by voluntarily ingesting a type of poisonous puffer fish, which drives them on a barbaric craze to kill. What? To make matters even worse, <laughs> the graphic novel Skull Island Birth of Kong suggests that these animals were capable of aiming electric beams from their mouths onto any target. If this was aimed at a human, the electrical current would be enough to cause extremely painful and disabling muscle contractions. Jesus, dude! These things got high and then raged out and killed that. That's absolutely insane. I feel like such a fake fan right now. I have literally on this comic book website, every single Godzilla and Kong book or comic purchase, like just listed there for me to read. I'm just always editing or gaming till like 4 a.m. I never get a free minute. It's completely my fault. I'm a complete fake fan. I have all the comics, but it's nice because this channel fills me in on everything anyways. At least I bought them. I supported the franchise. I'm doing my part. And ventricle fibrillation, which could cause what? immediate death. Damn. This is without mentioning the horrible second degree. Burn. What is that? I don't pause it. As horrible as this sounds, oh. you would be lucky if it ends here. Uh. As the psycho vultures would most likely gore into you once they get close enough. Jesus. Three, strangled and digested alive. Take Imagine it. you're walking through Skull Island's dense jungle as a way to refuge yourself from deadly airborne creatures. All of a sudden, you feel sticky oh. tentacles rain on you from a tree above. Mother this Long is Legs is so gangster. You have just walked into the trap of a vine strangler, a species of flora fauna that feed primarily on things like you. Wait a second, I'm a confused idiot. This entire time I thought those gangly pieces coming down were like the mouthpieces or something off of Mother Long Legs, which necessarily doesn't even make sense, which I'm sure will be covered later in this video. I didn't realize there were two kaiju or two creatures active in that scene. I feel so freaking uneducated and stupid. See, school wastes so much of my time teaching me math and history and science. This is bullshit, dude. This is what's important. A species of flora fauna that feed primarily 
entirely on things like you. But how did you Beautiful. get into this sticky situation in the first place? While you were walking through the jungle, your footsteps caused vibrations on the ground, which triggered the roots of the vine strangler. This animal plant hybrid then dropped its many tentacles on you and Jesus. broke you up into its wide open belly, where you will be digested alive for a whopping 72 hours. That is insane, Let's talk dude. talk about this horrifying experience. In the real, non-fictional world, the Venus flytrap will capture insects in a similar way, of course, without the tentacles. Once trapped, the fly would then be slowly digested by special enzymes. I love this channel so much. They can make something as intense as a fly being trapped. With that intense battle music, a fly getting trapped is so crazy. Without the tentacles. Once trapped, the fly would then be slowly <laughs> digested by special enzymes secreted by the Venus trap. Our vine strangler here would very likely function in a similar way, except more... Gruesome. Ugh. As you are trapped inside, the vine strangler will secrete enough enzymes to first dissolve your outer layer of skin, including your eyelids. Oh, Keep damn! In mind that you are still alive at this stage. The enzymes would then proceed to consume through muscle tissue and eventually, throughout the second day, your organs. At this point, you're probably dead. That Most people, sounds however, horrible. Would have died of shock before the enzymes reached the muscle tissue. After the third day, all that remains is a husk, or in our case, a pile of slimy skeletons. Oh my god! Four. Oh, this is good. to death. Gross. If you are someone <laughs> who is afraid of encountering big cats or sharks, this might just be your worst nightmare. I'm terrified the of sharks. Death jackal is known to be one of the most hyper aggressive, and in these terms, one of the most hyper brutal animals in Skull Island. Monarch's super species profile claims that this animal has the agility of a leopard and is armed with the bite of the great white shark. And if this wasn't bad enough, they come in packs. Let's talk about how fast this bite can kill. This should have been in the movie, damn it. Bite down with a force of 4,000 PSI. To crunch through a human rib cage, the death jackal would only require a mediocre bite of 742 PSI. That's all it takes? Just to flatten your upper torso. In the graphic novel, Skull Island Birth of Kong, we witnessed Helen Karsten, a survival expert, be the first to get torn to shreds by these ferocious animals Woo! in a matter of seconds. But even the death jackal pales in comparison against the next terrifying killer. Five, slurped a lot. This was my confusion. Skip this section if spiders terrify you. In Skull Island, there crawls a gargantuan insect that literally skewers its prey from above. Meet the mother long legs. See, that's what this I thought. Yeah. spider can grow up to 23 feet in height, though film and graphic novel depictions portray it as even larger. Oh. If you ever happen to run into a bamboo forest, make sure to look up. Now to the gory details. Once the mother long legs manages to impale you, it would not comfort you to know that you will not die immediately. Well, On the shit. contrary, you are about to experience an excruciatingly painful death. Believe it or not, this unfortunate fella was actually still conscious for a couple of seconds while witnessing God the monstrosity damn. that consumed him as his intestines were rapidly siphoned through the spider's long legs. What? To get into more detail, the spider's leg pierced through this individual's throat, which made him incapable of breathing or screaming, and it most likely damaged his spinal cord, which paralyzed him immediately. In addition to that, the spider's <laughs> yeah. legs are equipped with orifices that siphon the victim's juices and intestines up the long shaft, leading to the creature's stomach. Jesus, dude! We aren't finished with the mother long legs just yet. If you happen to be directly under the spider, expect to be covered in sticky tendrils. Which this are is what I thought happened with the, yeah, the spider's confusing. stomach. Like the vine strangler, these tendrils will lift you up into a slimy grave, sentencing you to a slow, agonizing death. Skull Island monsters seem to have a thing for leaving nasty leftovers. The next creature, however, leaves behind something more exotic. Shoot, I was hoping for one of those crazy ass famous Goji Center animations of a human being sucked up and digested or some crazy stuff. Mother Longlegs is a badass. Six, get stick bugged. <laughs> there is only one place on the planet where even trees themselves would like to eat you. Skull Island is home to the largest stick bug that has ever walked the earth. 
The spore mantis is actually a large slug-like parasite encased in a redwood-sized tree trunk. Dude, if that's a slug inside a giant tree trunk, can you imagine what it would look like without, like, if you could just find one in the wild without it, I imagine that would look like the most horrifying SCP monster ever. This giant slug, however, is equipped yeah, with dude, so gross. mandibles. If you ever happen to make the spore mantis angry enough to eat you, getting crunched to bits will be the less humiliating part. Once your remains are inside the parasite, its protein-rich sap will encase you in an exquisite crystalline amber, Je Jesus. revealing your crystal clear remains to the outside world <laughs> look once again. This, look at this guy. He's it's like preserved funny, like a mosquito, like Jurassic Park style. I gotta be honest, I don't mean to sound like a cocky douchebag or anything, but I'm pretty sure one of these would not kill me. There's no way this thing moves. Oh, though, what if it just hauls ass, but like zigzag or something? Like, dude's got no movement. He's a freaking tree trunk. In the 2017 film Kong Skull Island, Jack Chapman bumped into a spore mantis that was not as large Poor as the one Jack. described in Monarch's super species profiles, meaning that this creature was very likely a juvenile. Had it been as large as its other comrades, Jack would have probably been killed by the stick bug instead. I would have loved to see the skull crawler kill that thing then. I thought it didn't eat it because I was stupid and it just assumed it was like some weird, I don't know, alien-ish type creature. Obviously of this earth, so not alien, but like like not edible in a sense. And there was a sweet, delicious slug inside that big wooden casing. Crawlers were made to eat like anything that moves, dude. I'm pretty sure he should have gone for it. That would have been a badass Damn. scene. Chewed to death. This one would Swamp suck. in the perfect brewing pot for evolution to take its notoriously dark and twisted turn. This bitch. To the unsuspecting eye, these harmless plants seem to be simple swamp trees. But what lies beneath is perhaps oh! one of the most terrifying ways to die on this island. Swamp locusts use their tree-like legs as camouflage to make themselves indistinguishable from the surrounding vegetation. You really just can't trust shit in Skull Island. The freaking trees have attacked these people twice now. The real terror is found inside Ugh. that lamprey-like mouth, which is home to many sharp, backwards-facing teeth. By God. In the real world, these teeth are similar to the Congo's Goliath tigerfish, which are built to grip onto prey while inflicting outstanding amounts of trauma. Lovely. Once you find yourself unlucky enough to be inside its mouth, you still have a lot more to endure. Oh. The swamp locust's tooth-infested gastrointestinal tract is a single continuous chamber that makes up almost its entire body. You the can't have shit! The facing teeth will make it simply impossible to even think about escape. Getting punctured and chewed from all angles would cause any unfortunate individual to suffer a rather quick but most grotesque death. Eight. Well, quick is good! Flooding caves of doom. What? Let's pretend that for whatever reason, you managed to escape the swamp locust. Oh my god. <laughs> patch of floating land. You enter a cave in hopes that the danger had already passed. But I love then, their comments. Oh god! This mosasaur-sized crocodilian feeds on animals and people like you who were tricked into thinking this was just another floating patch of dirt and trees. Given that crocodilians have the Shit! strongest bite forces of all time, it's not too far-fetched to state that this monster is likely to have the strongest bite force of all the creatures in Skull Island. This would be enough to crunch through you, your friends, and your boat. Assuming wow. you didn't get crushed by those teeth, you probably are now sliding down this animal's esophagus. Once you splash into the siren jaw's dark, murky stomach, you start feeling an intense pain on your skin. You are now being showered and digested by the crocodile's extremely corrosive digestive acid. Jesus! Crocodilians in the real world stimulate their digestive process thanks to deoxygenated blood that is directed to the stomach. This blood is rich in acidic carbon dioxide, which stimulates the production of the most acidic stomach acid known in nature, capable of dissolving flesh and bones in record time. God Consequently, no! crocodiles are known to secrete stomach acid 10 times faster than any other animal. Yeah, they'll, they'll freaking digest an entire human so quickly. Like, calf or like freaking, I meant to say like hooves and bones and stuff. Like, they'll digest anything so quick. I can't get over how big that thing was though and how it was still such a, like a fraction. Like, keep like just half the size of a male muto, which is necessarily a small kaiju. It's just so cool how like the main kaiju caster so dominant. What does this mean for you? Since you are now in the most corrosive and acidic environment on the planet, you can expect to be turned into a bloody sludge in a matter of moments. Ugh! But could being showered by acid hurt more than being boiled to death? Nine, boiled alive. Well, shit, yes, man. you heard that right. There are creatures on this island that could potentially boil you alive. 
but before making it into the boiling pot, you first have to get caught by one of these. The Meyer squid is a giant cephalopod found in Skull Island that resembles a hybrid between the Pacific giant octopus and a squid. Your trip to the boiling pot could begin in one of two areas. Number one, it wouldn't take much effort for the squid to catch you with its 10 tentacles. Given that this is a freshwater squid, being close to a lake makes you fair game to get snatched from land and into the stomach of this monster. Number two, this squid is equipped with beak-like jaws that are on top of a complex muscle formation that allows them to spin. So fast, in fact, that this rotary motion could create a vortex-like whirlpool that sucks any creature unlucky enough to get swallowed by the squid. No way, Your dude. Your trip to the afterlife does not end here. You're now about to experience what it is to be inside a biothermal creature's stomach. What? Once you plunge into the squid's throat, you begin to suffer second-degree burns. What? This is because you're traveling close to the squid's internal ink sac. This ink is used as a defense mechanism to burn any potential predators alive. Dude, do you, uh, do you uh, does anyone watch this understand like the intensity of a second degree burn? Like a second degree burn is is a horrible intense pain. Suffering that shit all over your body as you slide down would be even first degree burns, man. If you haven't died on your way to the creature's stomach, here you will. At this point, besides being dissolved- Don't by show burns! Acid, you are suffering from severe third degree ah. burns. At this point, you don't feel any pain at all. You're fortunate that it's now over. 10. Well, that was Treaded quick and gnarly. Death. In Kong Skull Island, Jack suffered possibly one of the most brutal ways to die in the MonsterVerse. Contrary to what you may think, getting eaten by one of the larger skull crawlers would be better than most of the deaths discussed previously. But getting killed by a juvenile skull crawler would be far worse. And this right here, just real quick before, before we continue. So many people give me crap for skull crawlers being amongst my top three favorite kaiju, but you gotta understand my reasoning. Out of all the kaiju, like all the famous ones necessarily, if any were to spot you and eat you, skull crawlers, especially a small one, would be hands down the worst one by far. They'd be the horror movie kaiju. The first reason why this would hurt more is simply because juvenile skull crawlers have a denser concentration of backward facing teeth than the adult specimens. If you were to get eaten by an adult, you would simply get swallowed whole. But being eaten by a juvenile means you get brutally chewed and then swallowed. Oh, shit. Getting clamped on by a juvenile skull crawler means that any maneuver trying to escape this creature will possibly cause more damage as these backward facing teeth are constantly puncturing areas like your arms, legs, and upper torso. It's like a viper. This high concentration of teeth also means that they will likely strike an artery in any of these areas, Woo! leading to severe blood loss and imminent death. To put this into perspective, getting eaten by a juvenile skull crawler is similar to being placed on an Iron Maiden while having the door slam shut oh! many times over and over again. My God! After seeing the many horrifying ways you could die in Skull Island, do you think that you could survive living in the most dangerous biome of all time? Tell us how you would avoid getting killed in the comments. If you are really interested in putting your survival skills and island knowledge to the test, Make sure to take our quiz to see if you have the knowledge it takes to survive. That quiz sounds interesting as hell, but no, there's no way in hell I would survive at all. Eventually, you're going to need a water source. There's so many creatures that specifically hunt near water sources, you're going to die. Plus, you'd need a food source. You'd most likely have to go to trees, which is where, like, the other half of them all hunt. So, no, there's the, you'd die. I mean, there's, like, an entire movie based on this entire thing. A whole bunch of soldiers, in fact, go to Skull Island and they all die. You know, even with Kong protecting them. Although, now that Kong's an adult, if his ass was on Skull Island, it'd probably be a lot safer. Safer. Dude would be just knocking skull crawlers apart. Either way though, this video was freaking incredible. It makes me feel like a real piece of crap for not having read all the comics I've compiled. I'm just so busy all the time. I don't know, man. Just thank God for this channel to summarize it all and make it all beautiful right in front of my face. So yeah, check them out. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace!